What is up everybody? Thomas Kennedy here. I have another airbrush video for you. I think you'll like this one. Um, it's going to be a painting of Eminem. Of course, everybody knows who he is. One of the best rappers there will ever be. Um, and I want to say thanks to everybody who has subscribed to my channel. That really helps me out. Um, thanks for the comments. I'm trying to get through there and reply to the comments that are already on there. I'm gonna try to be more active on there and help y'all with anything y'all need to step y'all's artwork up. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed, please do that so that you can stay up to date with my newest videos. I'm gonna keep on posting them. All my painting projects I'll share with y'all. Um, also, if you're into tattoos and you wanna follow my tattoo work, um, look me up on Instagram, Thomas Kennedy Art and Facebook, Dark Theory Tattoo. Um, let me give y'all a sneak peek of the painting we will be doing. It turned out pretty cool. There it is, the man himself. So that's the painting that you'll learn to do in this video. You can see the whole process, kind of like a time, time lapse video or whatever. And also another thing I'm, I'm doing from here on out, I'm gonna share links in the description at the below. All the stuff I use to do these paintings, you can purchase through those links. I found all the stuff on Amazon, like from pens and tracing paper, to make your stencil, the Createx paint that I use, the actual airbrush I use, it's the Iwata HPCS, the projector that I used to project the stencil onto the canvas, um, the actual canvas itself, and probably some more, the light pad that I used to actually trace the reference photo, all kinds of stuff. Um, so check out those links you can find all those supplies in stores, Hobby Lobby. And I also shared a link to an air compressor, which is one similar to like what I use that I recommend. I don't recommend the ones that are actually geared towards airbrushing because they usually don't have enough power and they just run constantly and they cost more anyways. So the, the link I shared, it shows you the kind you can get for around a hundred bucks. You can order the one from that link if you want, or you can go to Harbor Freight or Walmart or anywhere that sells air compressors, TSC, Lowe's, and you can usually get a good one for right around a hundred bucks. That is plenty. Um, so do that. Uh, I think the airbrush that I shared the link to comes with the hose, the cleaner, and all that stuff. So if you're not sure what you need, if you're just starting out, just follow those links and get a rough idea of everything you need because that's pretty much all the same stuff I use. Um, I think that's about it to get started. So let's get to the airbrushing itself.
see how it's done that is how I do my paintings um, I airbrush most of it and you can airbrush the whole thing if you want but if I'm doing something that I'm gonna hang up and I really want it to pop I do use the paintbrush for the background like you saw in the video and I just like to make my stuff really pop I'm all about high contrast and just like stuff that just pops off the wall. That's just my style of painting. I like to do the highlights with a paintbrush, like the, the more detailed highlights. You can do all that with an airbrush, 
but when you're looking at the painting up close in the room, I just think it looks cooler to have that thick paint on there and it kind of makes the highlights even more vibrant. Um, you can do that on the canvases. If you're painting on a car, a motorcycle, a helmet or something, or a t-shirt, of course you can't do that. But on a canvas, you can. So if you can make that painting look like it's popping off the wall even more, I recommend doing that. Um, so that's about it. Let me, I wanna share with y'all real quick the stencil process. Here I have, you can see the reference photo. Now that's just a Google image and I printed that off on some good photo paper. I have a pretty decent printer here at the shop. So I printed that on some high quality photo paper because if you print it on regular paper, you lose a little bit of detail. So some of this stuff, I bump up the contrast in Photoshop. And if you don't have Photoshop, I recommend getting that, watching some YouTube videos, learning the basics, because it helps you out a lot. You can pay 20 bucks a month and get that. Um, and then you can install it on all your devices. So I recommend doing that. So the better your reference photo, the better you can do your painting. And uh, anyways, here's the stencil. This is, this is just some cheap tracing paper. And like I said, the pins I use, are they're in a link below in the description. I simply threw that on the light pad, traced it, shrunk it down to probably like three or four inches. And then I use that projector to project it onto the canvas. You just have to turn the lights out, get it pitch black. Your image projects is onto the canvas. Take a 4H pencil and just trace your outline onto the canvas. Get as much detail in there as you can. And that is the quickest, easiest way to stencil something that's on the realistic side. Um, you can also do the grid method. If you don't have money to buy a projector just yet, use the grid method. If you're not sure how to do that, look it up. There's probably YouTube videos on how to do that. Um, I might make one eventually if somebody needs to know I can make a video on how to do that It's a little bit of a slower process, but it's just as effective and it's still way way easier than just freehanding your whole painting I can freehand something like this But just the stenciling process would take me a couple hours because it's not something I do all the time So if I'm doing a painting as busy as I am today with other stuff or if I'm doing a commission painting time is money so I have freehanded so much stuff in my career as an artist that I'm not really trying to prove anything. Like I can freehand a lot of stuff, but if it doesn't make sense for me to do it, I'm just not gonna do it. If it's a situation where I have to freehand it, for example, like murals I've done where there was no way for me to get the room pitch black and it was a huge mural, you know, you just have to bust out and freehand that stuff. I've had to freehand Mount Rushmore on a wall before. And I spent, of course there was other stuff in that mural and it took me a whole day, seven or eight hours to get that outline drawn on that wall. But that's what I had to do. You figure your time into your price and it all works out. So you, if you're gonna be trying to do this to make money, you need to be able to freehand and draw but when you're doing paintings like this that can be projected, if you have the money to get the projector, I recommend doing that, saving yourself a lot of time, increase your profit, that kind of stuff. Um, so I think that covers everything. If you have any questions, just comment. I'll try to reply as quick as I can. Once again, thanks for checking out this video. Thanks for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, please do that. Check out all the links below. That will let you know all the products that I use to do something like this. And once again, thanks for watching and stay up to date and keep an eye out for my next video. Thanks.